We are the flow and we are the ebb. We are the weavers, we are the web. We are the flow and we are the ebb. We are the weavers, we are the web. We are the flow and we, we are, are the ebb. And we, we are the weavers, we are the web. We are the weavers, we are the web. We are the weavers, we are the web. 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 We are the wavers, we are the web. Here, on this lovely morning, here in our homes, or wherever we find ourselves this Sunday, here in this home of the heart, we make together for an hour. We pause in our busy lives to consider what is worthy of our deepest yearnings. In the time we are given here, may we pay attention to the wonder of each moment. May we grieve what is lost. May we be grateful for our life on this beautiful earth. And may we prepare ourselves for the work love calls us to do just as we are right now, right here, may we be the beloved community. Thank you, Bob. These opening words welcome all who have gathered on Zoom for our Sunday service. Welcome to regular members of the congregation, to friends and visitors who are with us today. Also, anyone who might be listening into the podcast or watching on YouTube at a later date. For anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Jane Blackall. I've been part of this congregation for 22 years now, and I'm the ministry coordinator, also finishing up my studies with Unitarian College. This morning, I am delighted to introduce the Reverend Bob Janice Dillon. He'll be leading most of the service this morning. Bob was minister with Merseyside Unitarians from 2015 to 2020. He's joining us from the Northwest this morning. And more recently, he served as the Congregational Connections Lead for our Unitarian General Assembly helping to build greater connection and cooperation between our Unitarian communities and activists. Bob is a tremendous writer and thinker and a splendid and soulful human being. He's also my friend. We're very lucky to have Bob with us this morning for his last UK preaching engagement before he returns to the US to take up a new ministry role in the Catskills. If anyone's here with us for the first time this morning, special welcome to you. I'm really glad you found us. I hope you find something of what you need this morning, something that speaks to your condition, as they say. Please do hang around afterwards for a chat or drop us an email in the week to introduce yourself if you'd like. Or you might think about coming to one of our other gatherings, one of our smaller gatherings, where you can get to know people more organically and ask us any questions you might have. If you're a regular here, thanks for all you do to welcome all who come. We each have a part to play in co-creating this sacred space, this spiritual community, so whoever you are, however you are, know that you are welcome in this space, just as we find you. And as we always say, feel free to do what you need to do to be comfortable. It is lovely to see all your faces in the gallery. It gives us a sense of togetherness. But we know for some it will feel more comfortable to keep your camera off, and that is fine. Similarly, there'll be invitations to join in along the way, but there's no compulsion. You can quietly lurk with our blessing. And you know how to find us if you want to say hello later on. I'm going to light our chalice now, as we do each Sunday and at other times when we get together. This simple ritual connects us with Unitarians and Unitarian Universalists the world over, and it reminds us of the historic and proudly progressive religious tradition of which this gathering is part. We 
light this chalice as a reminder of the tradition that holds us and the values and aspirations we share as a community, our commitment to the common good and our yearning for a better world that's yet to be, where all may know true freedom, justice, equality and peace. May this small flame be for us a sign of faith and hope and love. Well, it's a great pleasure to be in worship with you this morning. Um, and as Jane said, this is uh, my last uh, service be before uh, flying off to America. That bookshelf isn't always empty. Um, it did have books in it once upon a time. Um, but I could think of no finer way to, to end my uh, six years in, in UK than in service with you and with my dear friend, Jane. So um, uh, this is a great, great pleasure for me. We're going to have a reading, which is from the Psalms. Uh, I've been reading the Psalms again, and I really, really enjoy them. Um, they were, in my view, written by people, so they're full of human emotion, whether or not they were inspired by God, you know. Um, and according to our theology, we may find certain words difficult or certain concepts difficult. But I would encourage you, as you hear this Psalm, to try and get the emotional sense of it. Calvin called the Psalms a map of the soul. There's almost every emotion in the Psalm. So get a sense. This particular Psalm, which we're about to hear, Psalm 46, is a Psalm of consolation and assurance. It's giving us a sense of, uh, of, of sort of feeling assured when times are tough. And this has been read through the centuries in tough times in all kinds of different contexts. There's an image in there of, of, a, of a river, and we're we'll returning and playing with this image of uh, God in the midst of a river throughout this, this service and the peace and serenity that we find in rivers. So I'm going to ask uh, Jane to please read this. Uh, so this is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let us pray. Spirit of life, God of all love, in whom we live and move and have our being, as we turn our attention to the depths of this life, the cosmic mystery and wisdom that abides in all that is, we tune in to your holy presence within us and among us. There is a river whose streams make glad the glory of God. There is a peace, a serenity in the midst of our turbulent lives. We desire to be connected to this river, to know your peace. Even as we know suffering in our lives and others whom we love and others whom we do not know. Gracious spirit of life and love, may your abundant blessing be with all those who are in physical and emotional pain. We send healing wishes to Nusha and her mom. 
We send good wishes to all those who are lost, who have lost their way in life and are looking for the next step, the next road, or even just a song in their hearts so they can carry on. Or even just an opportunity to sit still and know your peace. We give thanks for this time of Lamas, this time of summertime. We hope that the spirit that guides the seasons on our way will help us to live in right relationship with this earth. Knowing we human beings are not the ultimate creators, but participators in a sacred dance, a dance that includes the rivers, and the clouds and the trees are sisters and the birds are brothers. Help us to live well upon this earth. Spirit of love be with all those who mourn this hour that they may be comforted. May the vast river of grief wind its way gently and over many miles, guiding us towards wisdom and gentleness and healing. God of all love, we offer up our joys and concerns, our hopes and fears, our beauty and brokenness, and call on you for insight, healing, and renewal. As we look forward now to the coming week, help us to live well each day and be our best selves, using our unique gifts in the service of love justice, and peace. Amen. Our first hymn today is an old favorite to many and a well-loved tune to worship rightly. It speaks of this project of justice and compassion that we embark on together each week and each moment as a congregation and as a world. This is a recording of the Kensington congregation from a service a few years back, so there'll probably be a bit of rustling and coughing. Um, and some of you might even hear your own voices. I'll try to match which voice to which, which face, but I probably get it wrong. The words will appear on screen in a moment for you to sing along. You can stay muted so you can sing as loud and as boisterously as you are able. But if you don't fancy singing this morning, it's absolutely fine to just listen. Here's our first hymn to worship lightly.
our second reading uh, builds upon this theme of rivers and being uh, finding peace by rivers. And it's written by one of the great poets of the canon, Langston Hughes, um, and uh, speaks of, well, what we sometimes call the interdependent web of being, this connection that we find with, with one another, with the, with the story of justice and uh, with uh, ourselves and with the spirit. So we're gonna hear Langston Hughes, we have a great privilege to hear Langston Hughes recite this poem, I've Known Rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo, and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers, my soul has grown deep like the rivers. It's amazing to have Langston Hughes with us this morning. We come now to a time of meditation. And you might want to get as comfortable as you can. You can put your feet on the floor to help ground and steady yourself or just whatever position is comfortable to you. You can close your eyes if you wish. In a while, we'll have a virtual chalice flame on this uh, screen and there'll be a few words to take us into a time of silence. After the words and after the silence, there'll be a lovely song from Marilisa, Rivers Run. As ever, the words and images and music are just an offering. You are absolutely free to Think your own thoughts and spend this time meditating in your own way. I invite you to breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in and breathing out. We've been reflecting on rivers and the presence of the holy in our lives. And you might imagine a river or any body of water, a babbling brook working its way down the mountain, or a mighty river coursing through forests and by cities, or if you prefer a lake or an ocean, Come and rest a while by the presence of water. There is a flow to water and there is a flow to our breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in at the flow of water. Breathe out at the tides. Come and rest by the presence of water in your mind's eye. Feel the peace that comes from being in the presence of the water on its way downstream. The water just doing what water does. Rest your mind a while. Don't try to force anything. Don't try to fix anything. Be now in the presence of nature, of spirit, of water. Feel the flow of water. Hear the water lap against the banks, lap against the shore. Perhaps there is a gentle winding flow to our lives as well.
Perhaps we too are headed somewhere. And perhaps as we wind our way in our own comings and goings, we too are cared for. Just as the river is a precious part of the earth, nourishing all that it comes into contact with. So are we a precious part of the earth, nourishing all that we come into contact with. This river is larger than our lives. Feel the presence of the ancestors. Those whose lives flow seamlessly into ours, again and again into our own lives. Feel our connection to the all, our connection to nature, our connection to the gentle breeze, which contains the breath of God. May the river refresh our spirits. Let us have a time now of silent reflection, contemplation, and meditation, which will be followed by some music. This weary earth we walk upon, she will endure when we are gone. While kingdoms come and kingdoms go, rivers run and rivers flow. You know I don't believe it's true, 
that in this world there's nothing new for darling you have just begun rivers flow and rivers run and if the river should ever run dry somewhere the rain will still fall will still fall from the sky when i'm beguiled by the fear that darker days are drawing near my darling you seduce the sun rivers flow and rivers run and if the river should ever run dry somewhere the rain will still fall will still fall from the sky this wounded earth we walk upon she will endure when we are gone and still i pray that you may know that rivers run and rivers flow and if the river should ever run dry somewhere the rain will still fall will still fall from the sky I cross my heart and I hope to live just long enough that I can give it all to you my darling one rivers flow and rivers run my darling one rivers flow and rivers run There's a memory that's stayed with me and it happened a long time ago before pandemic when back in the days when many of us had this incredible wondrous privilege a few of us anyway of being able to fly through the air in metal airplanes to various destinations and i was in uh, Eresera, portugal which is just west an hour west of lisbon and on the atlantic ocean. Uh, it's a town especially known for its surfing. I am not a surfer, except for the two hours that I got up on the board. And actually, I wasn't a surfer then, it turned out. So there wasn't much else to do but listen to the ocean, which is one of my favorite things to do. And I remember in the evening, just listening to the ocean and fe feeling this connection to the Atlantic Ocean, which has been my home throughout my life. You probably familiar with the sound of waves crashing on the shore. What a sound they make. Especially at nightfall, there's something about the sound of waves pulsing onto the shore that has such a profound effect on the human psyche. That rhythmic roar and lull, crashing and subsiding, the smell, smell of the salt air and the seagulls crying in it. And as the waves pull back and forth, back and forth, the human spirit seems to go into its own rhythm of remembering and forgetting, being pulled gently forwards and backwards. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. I've been blessed to see a few rivers in my days, but my most sacred river is the Atlantic Ocean. I know it's cheating a bit to call the Atlantic Ocean a river, but we call flying across the 3000 mile expanse of the Atlantic Ocean crossing the pond. So why can't we call it a river? And its streams have always brought me comfort. It occurred to me that night in Eresera that for all my life being in all these different places, I have always lived within an hour or two of the Atlantic.
come from somewhat of a traveling family. My brothers and parents all love to travel around the world. I went down to the Connecticut beaches as a kid to splash about in the flat waters where the Atlantic flows into the Long Island Sound. I've seen the Irish Sea many times from Blackpool and Southport from the piers. I've crossed the English Channel on a ferry. I have known Plymouth and Lundy, Tyne and White. I've known rivers. I've stood on the Normandy beaches where the Americans and the Polish and the Canadians and the English came ashore all those years ago and thought about my grandfather who was in the Pacific theater at the time fixing radios. Now he is no longer with us as the phrase goes, except that he is always with me. I've been to the New Jersey shore in winter when there is next to no one there on miles of expanse of brilliant white sand and the brisk wind greets you like a hail and hearty friend. We've even been to the Isle of Jersey in the summer on a bicycle when the whole world feels open to the heart's longing. I fear I'm showing off now, which is not my intent. Travel has been helpful to my spirit's journey in some respects. It helped me become a little bit more compassionate, I hope, exposed me to different cultures, brought me out of myself. But I am no wiser, not one bit, than someone who has lived in their immediate neighborhood for every one of their days. There are many ways to expand the soul and you don't need to travel miles to do it. And what I really want to talk to you about today is not travel, but the blessing blessing that accompanies us in our lives, this mysterious blessing. The river that God is within, as the psalmist writes, the holy places where the most high dwells. When we are in the midst of nature, sometimes we feel a sense of this blessing, don't we? When we're out there in the woods or by the lakes, when you're in the midst of nature, we get a sense that the world is more precious than we can possibly ever put words to, try as we might. That this world uplifts and sustains us, grounds us and nourishes us. There is a blessing in the midst of rivers and mountains and forests, there is a blessing. We can try to put words, put it into words. We can try to affix theology and dogma to it. But first and foremost, it is felt in the heart as we are present in nature and present to our lives. Well, we're talking about theology. Jesus did speak of this blessing in his first words in the book of Mark. Time is abundant, he said. Time is abundant. God's reign is right here. Open your mind, change your heart, believe in the blessing. What did he mean by that? What is the blessing? I don't really know, but I feel like I've been living out this blessing my whole life. And for me, a lot of my faith is just connecting with that sense of life being such a blessing. This was a hard year for me. It was a hard year for many. It was a hard year for me. My marriage broke up. And we're on the road to divorce. The kids are all right, thank God. But this is one of those excruciatingly hard things that happen to people, and it happened to me. At the same time, there's been this pandemic. I don't know if you heard about this pandemic, but it sort of affected things a little bit. At the congregations in Merseyside, where I served, several congregants died over the last year and a half. At least two or three with COVID, a couple from the stress of lockdown, a couple more in the other usual ways that death greets us as we get a bit older. I've been a minister for 15 years now, and I keep thinking that one of these days I'll get the hang of death and grief, and I never do. My grandmother died too, after a good life at 90 odd years, and I was quite close to her. And my parents' beloved dog, who I was quite close to too in, my own, in our own way, died at 18 after a good long life. Meanwhile, it was a time of transition. I was already planning on finishing up my ministry at Merseyside after five good years. 
And uh, that was a difficult transition in the midst of uh, uh, lockdown, uh, midst of lockdown, a poignant one and a good one, but a hard one. It's been a hard time. By the way, Jane, your minister, ministry coordinator, has been such a blessing to me throughout this incredibly hard time. A sure presence in times of trouble. She's a dear friend, and she's also an amazing pastoral presence, a wise counselor, and an incredible human being, as I'm sure many of you already know. It's been a difficult year, and I'm telling you this because I want you to know when I say that I feel there is a blessing to this life, a deep blessing, a mysterious but profound blessing at the heart of life. I am not saying that everything will work out tickety-boo and life will always go smoothly. I am not claiming that our bodies will not fall apart and fail us in the end because, spoiler alert, that is exactly what will happen, and that's if we're lucky. The great faiths of the world understand this. Without the reality of crucifixion, the Christian story is just a bit of sentimental fluff, but our bodies do fall apart. Bad things do happen to us of all manner of bad things. The poem we heard Langston Hughes titled this poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers, because he is speaking directly from the African-American experience. The poem is a song of assurance, a song of hope, but it is seen through the lens of deep, great multi-generational suffering. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans. I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. Langston Hughes's poem is not a pleasure cruise. It is a hard fought, bruised redemption after the historical scars of massive oppression and violence. And yet, and yet, in the midst of that, there is the river. Rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. Now, I have lived an extremely comfortable life by the standards of human experience, and Hughes's poem reminds me of that. But even I know that the blessing is not about life going well all the time. It's not about careening from success to success or party to party. No one needs to tell me that the world can be a difficult place, and I suspect no one needs to tell any of us that these days in 2021. There were many days in the past year where I felt I couldn't cope. There were many days I felt upset at God, upset at the structure of the universe, which I didn't understand and still don't. It did give me some solace to know that the psalmist and the Buddha and Harriet Tubman and the Christ had suffered too. Not that I wanted any of them to suffer, but I knew that I was in good company, that I was not alone. And I feel in my bones what these great ones have been saying all this time, to paraphrase Thornton Wilder, that there is something way down deep that is special about this life that we get to live. So deeply special. There is a blessing at the heart of life. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Have you ever sat by the rivers, heard the tides of the great rivers, the oceans, and felt a serenity surge up in your bones, a sense that everything somehow is already all right? that you are received just as you are, incomplete, battered, guilty, sorrowful, bereft. You are received just as you are by the river. That you are welcome, that your life is welcome on this earth. 
and the waves are breaking and the river is making its way to the sea. And even if our frail flesh will crumble over time into food for the daisies, it's all right somehow because there is a blessing and we all are a part of it. Right at this moment, we are a part of that blessing. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is within her. She will not fall. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. But this holy moment, me, you, sitting by the river, God is in the midst of this life. There is something eternal, something precious beyond words, beyond creeds, beyond all that can be put into language beyond time itself, there is something precious in the presence, in the blessing. Jesus spoke, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's right here, it's near enough to touch. It's not in some far off kingdom beyond the clouds. It's at hand, even in the midst of a terrible pandemic, when at times we have to be at arm's length from each other. The holy is still at the heart of human existence, as near as our jugular vein, as close as our thoughts. Trust in the blessing. I did not know, sitting by the beach in Arisera, listening to the waves of the river, my river, the Atlantic Ocean. I didn't know that 2020 would be a hard year. I didn't know that 2021 would be a year of enormous transitions as well as challenges. But I felt the blessing then. And I feel it now. Somehow it connects then and now. When we're near the river, we feel everything connected, the past and the future, our own hurts and the wisdom, our own longing and peace. There is a river that flows through our veins and gives us breath. And we are a part of that great river. And you know, everything will be all right. All shall be well and all manner of things shall be well, as Julian of Norwich said. Every little thing is going to be all right, as Bob Marley said. Not because life won't go wrong. It will. It has done. And it will again. Life does go wrong. And the blessing is still here, is always here. And over time, our soul grows deep like the rivers. May the sacred peace of the love beyond all naming, of the mystery that has us in her keeping, be yours today, friends, and evermore. Amen. So now we're going to sing our uh, second hymn, one more chance, last chance to sing together now. So uh, this hymn, the good night hymn has lovely words. Um, so it doesn't matter that we sing it in the morning. It's a great, great hymn for any time. It speaks of the time we, the, it speaks of the strength we find in community and in connection with the spirit to face the everyday struggles that we all face and the light we all share. So you're free to sing loudly and boisterously. We'll all remain muted, but you can sing in your own home and in this gathered community. Or if you'd rather listen, that's fine too. Let us hear the good night hymn.
Thanks so much, Bob, for blessing us this morning with your presence and your wisdom. We're honoured that you said yes, especially in the midst of all your hectic preparations for leaving. Thanks to, uh, to John for hosting, for Janine for all her behind the scenes support, to Marilisa for all the lovely music. I want to take this opportunity to remind you once again that this church, this community very much has a life beyond Sundays on Zoom. We're still collectively going through this pretty rough time and many of us feel worn out and weary. We can still be a source of support. You might want to think to check in with each other during the week with a text or an email or pop along to the coffee morning or one of our other regular gatherings to connect with each other and share what's going on in your life. If you're relatively new, these small groups are a great way to get to know us better and have conversations about the things that matter most in life or just to muck about, which is what mainly happens at the coffee morning. So as I say, there are a number of opportunities to hang out and have a chat. Coffee mornings 10.30 on Tuesday. Heart and Soul this week is on the theme of teachers. This is our contemplative spiritual gathering. Um, there are a few spaces for tonight at seven and I could possibly squeeze one or two more in for Friday. If you've not been before, it's never too late to start. Um, there are details of all these events in the weekly email and you can be in touch by email at any time. Do drop us a line. I also want to draw your attention to a couple of national Unitarian events that are coming up in a couple of weeks time on the 14th of August, I think it is. There's a one day online gathering of the Unitarian Music Society with hymn singing and talks and a quiz and more. And then a the week after that, something I'm particularly enthusiastic about. Um, this year's online summer school starts on Saturday, the 21st of August. I'll be leading the first night worship and in the nights that follow, we've got a great lineup of speakers giving in-depth hour-long talks on why are we here, discerning our Unitarian mission in an upturned world. Um, again, details of how to sign up for that are in the weekly email. Please do book your place, it will be smashing. There'll be virtual coffee time after the service today if you want to hang around and if you can bear it, we always like to take a group photo after the closing music. We'll be back next week uh, on Zoom at 10 o'clock as usual uh, when ha Harold will be doing the sermon. Feel free to uh, share the link with your trusted friends. So we've just got our closing words and closing music now. As always, uh, I invite you to select gallery view at this point so that we can all see everyone and get a sense of the collected com community. And I'll hand over to Bob now for our benediction. Friends, may the spirit of wisdom and compassion and healing and justice be with you. And wherever you find yourself at this time in your life, trust that the river is on its way to you. The river that has flown through the ancestors, flows through time and space. The river that brings nourishment that brings a reminder of what life is all about, that brings gratitude, is flowing towards you. No matter how removed you may feel from it in this moment, there is a river of healing, a river of justice that is still flowing in each of our lives and in our lives together in this world. May it be so. Blessed be. Amen. I was born in the path of the winter wind and raised where the mountains are rolled. The springtime waters came dancing down and I remember the tales they told. The whistling ways of my younger days to quickly have faded on by. But all of their memories linger on like the light in a fading sky. River, take me along in your sunshine. Sing me your song, ever moving and winding and free. You rolling old river, you changing old river. Let's you and me river roll down to the sea. I've been to the city and back again. I've been moved by some things that I've learned. 
Met a lot of good people and I called them friends. Felt the change when the seasons turned. I heard all the songs that the children sing and listened to love's melodies. I felt my own music within me rise like the wind in the autumn trees. River, take me along in your sunshine. Sing me your song, ever moving and winding and free. You rolling old river, you changing old river. Let's you and me river on down to the sea. Someday when the flowers are blooming still, someday when the grass is still green, my rolling waters will round me bend and flow into the open sea. So here's to the rainbow that followed me here, and here's to the friends that I know, and here's to the song that's within me now. I will sing it wherever I go. River, take me along in your sunshine. Sing me your song, ever moving and winding and free. You rolling old river, you changing old river. Let's you and me river run down to the sea. Ever moving and winding and free, you rolling old river, you changing old river, let's you and me river, run down to the sea.